Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hashtasha and welcome to something new on my channel. It's Dominion. And in case you do know Dominion, you might want to click the link in the bottom right corner here to get to a playlist with games against real players where I do not explain everything. But for everyone else or for players who want to learn something new about Dominion strategy, maybe, because I'm a pretty good player, um, this video is for you. So Dominion is a card game where you ideally build your own deck in a way that leads to you having more victory points at the end of the game than your opponent. Victory points are usually accumulated by buying victory cards, which are these green ones on the left. But there are also curses, for example, which give you negative victory points. Usually you cannot do anything with these cards when you have them in your hand, so they are essentially dead cards in your hand. Ergo, you should not buy these too early, and the balance of that is a pretty interesting part about Dominion. Um, besides the Victory and Curse cards, there are other card types like Treasure here on the right. Um, these give you coins when you play them, and you need coins to buy other cards, so they are pretty important. And in the middle section here, we have 10 action cards. These all do stuff for you when you play them. There are also two subtypes here, like action attack and action reaction. The first one does something cruel to your opponents, because it's an attack, obviously. And reaction reacts to something. In the case of mode here, um, it reacts to other players playing attack cards and when another player does that, you can reveal a mode and nullify the attack. But there are also reactions that react to other players buying provinces or you gaining cards. There are several expansions for Dominion and at the moment there's a pool of 192 cards. And each game is chosen randomly. So from this pool of 192 cards, 10 are chosen randomly and that will be the game. So every game is different. In case you want to know how many games there are, I don't know. But before the release of the last expansion, there were about 12 quadrillion different games, or kingdoms as we players call it. And the last expansion was the biggest one, so there's far more than 12 quadrillion different kingdoms now. You couldn't play all of these games in a lifetime, even if you did nothing else. Okay, um, the cards on the side here, Treasure, Curse, Victory, um, these are available in every game. So gold is always in every game, Silver, Copper, Curse, Province, Duchy, Estate. So these are not randomly chosen, only these 10 in the middle. Now let's look at a card like Woodcutter. At the top you have the name, it's Woodcutter. At the bottom you have the type, which is action for woodcutter. At the bottom left you have the price or cost, which is three coins. So you need three coins to buy woodcutter. And in the middle you have what the card does for you. In the case of woodcutter here it gives you plus one buy and plus two coins. In the case of province here it gives you six victory points at the end of the game. Curse gives you minus one victory point at the end of the game. And silver gives you two coins when you play it. There are four resources in this game. One is coins. The other one is victory points. But there's also actions and buys. And these you can increase by playing action cards. Like a woodcut here gives you plus one buy. But playing an action card also costs an action. So when you play a woodcutter you have zero actions. That means you can only play one woodcutter and then nothing else because you have zero actions. But for that you have two buys and also two coins for your buy phase. Okay, um, a starting deck of the starting decks of the players consists of 10 cards and 7 of these are coppers and 3 are estates. So you will either start with 5 coppers and 3 coppers in your starting turns, 
or four coppers and three coppers. And he started with three coppers and in his next turn he will have four. He bought a woodcutter. I could buy something from five here. Um, and when I buy something it goes into my discard pile which is here. Then I have my next hand and I'll buy something goes to my discard pile is here. So in each turn you basically have three phases. One is the action phase in which you can play action cards which I can't because I do not have any action cards in my deck at the moment. Then you have your buy phase in which you can play treasure cards and buy stuff. And then you have your discard phase or cleanup phase in which you discard everything that you played this turn and everything left in your hand. And it goes to your discard pile. After that you draw five cards for your next turn. And because of that, after two turns, you will have to shuffle your discard pile to form a new deck because there will not be any cards to draw for you. Basically, every time when you draw a card and your deck is empty, you shuffle your discard and form a new deck. Um, this can even happen in mid-turn because there are action cards that draw your cards. The game ends after the turn where either the province pile or any three other piles run out. At the top right of each pile you see how many cards are left in it. Victory cards always have 8 cards in them in 2 player games. In 3 player games it's 12 and in 4 player games it's 12 too. Um, action cards have 10 per pile. And Woodcutter here is 9 because he bought a Woodcutter, so it's 9 here. And yeah, Gold has 30, Silver has 40, Copper has 60 minus the starting Coppers. So he has 7 Coppers, I have 7 Coppers, 60 minus 14 is 46. And Curses will be 10 per player minus 10. So in a 2 player game it's 10 Curses, in a 3 player game it's 20 Curses, 4 player games 30 Curses, and so on. Okay, that's pretty much about it. That's how you play Dominion. And we will now go through the action cards. Um, I guess we will start with Seller. So Seller is a card. Basically when you play an action card you do everything that is on the card from top to bottom. It's like a little computer program. It does what is on it and then you do it. So Seller gives you plus one action. That means if I play a seller, I have zero actions because I played an action card, but then I get plus one action, so I have one action again. That means that after a seller, you can play a woodcutter, for example. Then after you get that action, you discard any number of cards from your hand and draw a card per card that you discarded. So if you play a seller and discard four copper, you draw five, four new cards from your deck, not five. Um, this is what we call a deck sifter in Dominion terms. Because you can sift with it through your deck. You can discard your bad cards and draw better cards. There are several of these sellers. The most simple and also the cheapest one. Then we have Moat. Um, Moat has two parts. One is the action part at the top here and the bottom part is the reaction part. So when you play a mod, only this happens. You draw two cards. And it's a terminal action, or what we call a terminal action, because it does not have any plus actions on it, like seller. So when you play a mod, your actions are zero. You cannot play any other action cards after that, when your actions are zero. Then we have the reaction part. And it is when another player plays an attack card, you may reveal this mode from your hand. And if you do, you're not affected by that attack. So when another player plays a militia and I reveal a mode, nothing happens for me. Then we have village. Village draws you one card and then you get plus two actions. That means if you play a village, you can play two woodcutters, for example, or two modes. Because you play the village, you have zero actions, then you draw a card, you have five cards again, and then you get plus two actions, so you have two actions. 
Um, village is what we call a village. There are several villages in Dominion and all of them give plus two actions. So that is what makes a village a village, the plus two actions. But it's also a cantrip. And a cantrip is a card that gives at least one card and one action. So when you place it, it replaces itself. So if I play a village, I will have four cards in my hand because I played the village from my hand. But then I draw a card, so I will have five cards again. So it's a cantrip. In case you do know the term, it comes from magic, I believe. Then we have woodcutter, another terminal action. When you play this, it gives you a plus one buy. So you have two buys and can buy two cards in your buy phase. But it also gives you plus two coins. Then we have Workshop. Workshop gains you a card, costing up to four. So when you play a Workshop, you can gain a Silver, or a Smizzy, or a Curse, or a Copper, or whatever you want, except for Market, Mine, Gold, Province, and Duchy. When you gain a card, it goes to your discard pile here. Also, when you buy a card, you gain it afterwards, so it goes to your discard pile, unless stated otherwise on the card. Then we got Militia. Militia gives you plus two coins when you play it, and then each other player discards down to three cards in his hand. So um, usually you will have to discard two cards when another player plays a Militia. Then we have Remodel. Remodel is a treasure. There are several treasures in Dominion, by the way. Remodel is one of them. Trash a card from your hand. When you trash a card, it goes to the trash. It's out of your deck, you will not see it again, usually. So I could play a remodel, trash a card, and then I gain a card costing up to two more than the trash card. If I played a remodel in this hand, trash a copper, I could gain a cellar, moat, or estate. Or even a copper or a curse if I want to, because in gain a card costing up to two more, zero is included. Of course. Everything else that is less than two more is included. Um, yeah, that's a remodel. So Smizzy, a pretty simple terminal action, plus three cards. So when you play a Smizzy, your hand size increases by two. Because you play the Smizzy, you only have four cards in your hand when you played it. Then you draw three cards, you will have seven cards in hand. It's two more than five. Then we have Market, another cantrip, plus one card, plus one action. It's a cantrip. Then you also get plus one buy and plus one coin for your buy phase. Relatively good cantrip, but most of the cards costing five are pretty good. Then we have Mine. Mine is another treasure. Trash, trash is a treasure card from your hand. And then you gain a treasure card costing up to three more and put it into your hand. Copper has a cost of zero, so when I play a mine, trash a copper, I can gain a silver in hand. Because the silver costs three, and if I trash the silver, I can get a gold, and so on. So, now that I explained all these cards, we can finally start playing here. And because I want to teach you about basic strategies, I will teach you the most simple strategy first. And what we will do is we will ignore all these action cards. So the fun part about Dominion is figuring out a strategy that is better than your opponent's strategy in a given kingdom. And because my opponent is a pretty bad bot, I will play a strategy that is known as big money. I will only buy treasure cards. I will not buy a single action card. He buys a woodcutter and a smizzy from his... 3-4 turns at the beginning, then he buys a market. This will be a gold for me. And knowing this strategy here, the big money strategy, is very important in Dominion. Because these 10 cards are always different, but these cards are available in every game. So you can always play big money, and if you play a strategy, it has to be better than big money. Because otherwise, you should play big money, because it's better. And yeah, big money is kind of a measure point. 
you have to measure your strategy against big money. And yeah, I might win this game. I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, you would see that big money is pretty strong. And you might ask yourself, hey, this guy is buying all these awesome action cards and you beat him by only buying money. Um, what is there that beats big money in this game? And as a matter of fact, there are a lot of things that beat big money in this game. But the most simple one is big money plus one action, like a smizzy. As you can imagine, when you have a single smizzy and play only treasures, otherwise your terminal actions will never collide. You can always play your smizzy when you have it. And um, you get faster through your deck, which is very important in Dominion. And also your hand size increases when you play a smizzy. You have a greater chance to buy a province or gold. I will buy a province here, by the way. And yeah, as a matter of fact, big money and smizzy beats big money every single time. So does big money and mine, for example. So yeah, we will play this out. I'm two provinces ahead at the moment. This will be a third province. He keeps on buying action cards. I'm okay with that. Next province here in my hand. So um, we have turn 16 and this is the measure point because on average a big money deck buys four provinces or half of the provinces in 16 turn. 16 turns. So um, when you play a strategy you have to be faster than that. So when you play Smizzy and pick money, you buy four provinces in 14 turns, I believe, on average. So that is why big money and Smizzy beats big money every time. Okay, I have five provinces now. He has zero. He already bought an estate. Which is a terrible victory point card usually because it only gives one victory point and it's a dead card in your hand. You know, if you want to beat a province you have to buy six estates, it's six dead cards in your deck against one. It's pretty terrible. But yeah, he doesn't have a lot of choices because he cannot contest me on provinces now. Because if he did, the game would end earlier and he would have lost. Anyways, he has lost. 45 to 18. Against the surfbot. Okay, and now we will play another game against a bot that plays a big money strategy. And I will show you the next important strategy, which is called the engine strategy. Alright, here we are in the game against the banker bot. And he will most likely play big money plus mine, maybe by a single market. However, we will play what is called an engine. We will basically get to the point where we draw our whole deck consistently in about, I don't know, 14 turns or something. We will see how good it goes. It depends on shuffle luck, of course, a bit. Um, I bought a seller and a market. He bought nothing and a mine. I will play a market here. And from five I will buy another market actually. And here I will sell away these two estates. And I only get three. I will buy a workshop. He's buying an awful lot of silvers. He has three already. I have zero. Um, here I will buy a remodel. To trash my estates into smizzies and villages. Discard this. And here I will gain a smizzy. And buy a village. 
And I should get a silver now. Yeah, we have five, but we will buy a single silver. Maybe a second seller. He has two mines and one market, by the way. As his only action cards, but otherwise he plays big money. Um, here we will gain a smithy and buy another village. Play a village, play a market, play a market. Um, we will sell away all of these because I'm sure there's a smizzy in these four cards that were there. Then we play the smizzy. And we have eight. We could buy gold. But I'd rather buy another market and a village at this point. Because I really need to get rid of my estates first. Okay, here I will trash an estate into a smithy and buy nothing. It was a terrible, terrible draw. He buys his first province. I'm not too worried about that. So as you see, I get long action chains already. Um, here I won't play this Mizzy, although I will play it because I have six cards left in my deck and when I end this turn I will draw these six cards, or five of them, and these will all be in my discard. But when I play this Mizzy, there's only three cards left in there, now there's only two left, and now I can sell out these away to draw the other two. And this is another important part about Dominion, it's deck or shuffle control or discard pile control, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, after my cleanup phase, I will discard all of these and I will shuffle my whole discard pile and these will all be in my deck. Guaranteed. And that is pretty important at this point. We'll gain another smizzy with my workshop and I will trash this estate into a village and buy a village and a market. And now we will try to get a mine and gold. He has two provinces now. I'm totally fine with that. Because here we can draw our whole deck again, most likely, or nearly our whole deck. Yeah, we, we draw our whole deck. We can remodel this estate into a smizzy and workshop ourselves a village and buy a mine and gold. I could buy a third seller, although I do not really need it. And here I can play two villages, smizzy, smizzy, village, market, Market, Smizzy. Um, I don't want to play the second Smizzy because then I would have zero actions and I couldn't play the mine afterwards. I discard four coppers to draw another village. There it is. And now we will play this Smithy. And yeah, we can totally play it out here. Draw our whole deck. Um, Mine, trash this copper, gain a silver, play a workshop to gain yet another smizzy, maybe a village. And we have 17, we will buy two provinces. Village, village, market, smizzy, village, market, um, seller, all of these away. Village, market, market. And we'll make a silver here. And we won't play the remodel at the moment. And um, we will 
buy another gold and a third cellar. He buys his third province. I am okay with that because most likely I will be able to buy the last three provinces this turn. Smizzy, village, market, seller, these away, and these, draw five new cards, play village, play Smizzy, play a market, um, sell her this away, maybe. And we can also sell her the workshop away, because why not? Okay, now we will mine this copper into a silver and remodel a gold into a province. And we will buy the last two provinces and an extra estate. The game is over and we have a pretty big lead. Okay, there's one more important strategy that I will show to you in a sec. Oh yeah, right now. One sec. <laughs> Alright, here we are again. We got three new cards. You don't know Counselor. It gives you plus two coins. It's terminal, by the way. And you may immediately put your deck into your discard pile. So all the cards that are here into this discard pile. Then we got Witch which draws you two cards, and then each other player gains a curse, which is this card here, minus one victory point. And we have Gardens. Gardens is worth one victory point for every ten cards in your deck run down. So here we have to think about what strategy to go for. We do not have a village, so we cannot really go for an engine, because we can only play one terminal action like a smithy or a witch. We can go for Witch Big Money, which is pretty strong. And Smithy Big Money is pretty strong too. But because I want to show you the last of the three most important strategies, we will go for a Rush strategy. We will open Workshop. He opens Witch, which is terrible for us. And we will open with another Workshop. Here we four, and we will buy a Workshop. And then we will go for gardens. Here we will workshop the gardens and buy an estate. Here we will workshop gardens and buy a workshop. So um, we want to empty three piles faster than he can buy a lot of provinces. He can buy one, two, three provinces. Doesn't really matter. But as soon as he has four, it, yeah, there's a good chance we will lose this game. So we will keep on emptying out gardens and estates. Here I have zero money, so I will buy a copper, because it's an extra card for the garden's points. He buys more money, which is good for us, because he could also have bought province there in this turn before. Here we gain a gardens, buy a copper. Here we gain a Gardens and buy a Copper. And apparently he doesn't even try to contest us on Gardens, which is good. Here we buy another Workshop. This will be an Estate. He has one province so far. Get the last Gardens, buy a Copper. Now we will empty workshops before estates, if we can. Because ideally we want a workshop in every hand. Also we need the third pile empty to end the game. 
Workshop Estate. And Workshop Estate. And now we need at least one more turn. We need two. That is bad. He has five provinces and buys the second last estate. But we have 32 points from the gardens. We have 10 from the estates now. Minus six from the curses. And we have one by two points. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's the rush strategy in a nutshell. The board was not really good for a rush strategy because there's witch big money and stuff. But actually I only took out the key components for the engine. And yeah, we got a little bit lucky, but this was just to illustrate what the rush strategy is, how to play it, not when to play it exactly, because that is a tough call. Okay, that are the three big strategies in a nutshell. Thanks for watching, until next time.